In this video, uh, I'm going to explain why subtracting a number is the same as adding a number's opposite. So first, let's start with an investigation and investigate some subtraction problems that we already know the answer to. So we'll start with a real simple one. 5 minus 3. Okay, so we all know that 5 minus 3 is going to give us an answer of 2. Now let's investigate uh, adding the opposite. Instead of subtracting 3, we're now going to add 3's opposite. So the problem would look like this. So we'd have 5 plus negative 3. Now if we do the calculation here, I have 5 positives. Three negatives, positives and negatives are opposites, and every time I combine a positive with a negative, it's going to give me zero. So if I combine, get zero, zero, zero. So it looks like when I have five positives to three negatives, I'm going to have two positives left over. My answer is two. Notice we get the same answer when we're subtracting three or adding 3's opposite. Let's take a look at another one. 8 minus 2. Again, another simple subtraction problem we're used to finding the answer. 8 minus 2 is going to give us 6. Now instead of subtracting 2, let's add 2's opposite. I have 8 positives and 2 negatives. Now you can visualize the, the positives and negatives canceling out and you can see that I have six more positives than I do negatives, so when I do this cancellation, I'm going to have six positives left over, and again, I get the same answer. So now you might be wondering, why go through all this trouble when we can just do the simple subtraction? Well, the answer is, the subtraction isn't always that simple, and a lot of times it's easier to change it to an addition problem than it is to calculate the subtraction. Let's take a look. So here's a subtraction problem that we're not used to doing. We're starting with 10 things, and we're trying to take 16 things away. Well, this is something that we're not used to. But let's go ahead and make this transition, changing this from a subtraction problem to an addition problem. Well, I'm subtracting 16, so when I make this transition, I want to add 16, or the opposite of positive 16. So 10 is gonna stay the same. I'm gonna change subtraction to addition. This was a positive 16. Now I'm gonna change it to its opposite, which is a negative 16. There is a problem that we know how to get the answer to. I have 10 positives and 16 negatives. I have more negatives there, so I'm going to have a negative answer left over. How many more negatives do I have? Well, I have six more negatives, so my answer will be negative six. So you might be wondering how this works in the real world. I think a great example for why subtracting a number is the same as adding a number's opposite deals with going to the store and either purchasing something with cash or using a credit card to purchase that. So let's say I go to the store, and for this example here in this video, my net worth is $25. So I have $25 to my name. In this case, let's say it's all in my pocket in cash. I go to the store and I make a purchase for $10. So there's going to be subtracting $10 from my net worth, and I'm going to have $15 left over. So there's an example of subtraction paying with cash. Now let's say instead of paying with cash, I'm actually going to pay with a credit card. So I go to the store, I have the same net worth. $25. Now what I'm actually going to do with paying with a credit card is I'm actually going to be adding debt to my net worth. So I'm going to be adding this debt. I'm charging $10 on my credit card. Regardless of how I write this, I'm still going to have the same net worth in the end. Once I go and pay my credit card off, I'm still going to be worth $15. So there's a real world example for you. Let's take a look at another real world example. In this case, I think this is the, the time when students have a, the most difficult time visualizing or figuring out how this works. So in this case, I have a negative 50 and I'm subtracting a negative 10. This is subtraction of a negative. Well, if we use our rule, subtraction of a negative should be the same as adding its opposite, which will be a positive. So in this case, subtracting a negative 10 is the same as adding its opposite, which is positive 10. Lots of students wonder how this can be or why this would work. Let me try to use another real world example to explain this. So to explain why subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive, uh, we're going to use a real world example where I'm going to the store and I'm buying something with a credit card. So let's say I go to the store and I purchase $50 worth of merchandise. 
$50 worth of merchandise at the store, put it on my credit card. Now, later, I figure out, oh, I don't need one of these things. Let's say that thing that I don't need is $10. So I take that thing back to the store and they credit my account. That's my perspective is they've credited my account. But from the store's perspective, they've actually removed a debt of $10. So let's take a look here. So the store has removed the debt. They had this debt and they've removed it. So to remove something, you subtract it. And what they're doing is they're subtracting that debt of $10 from their money, okay? From my perspective, I took this thing back and they have credited or added $10 to my account. So here's my money and what they've done here is added $10 to my account. These things have to mean the same thing, that subtracting this $10 or this debt of $10 has to be the same thing as adding this $10 credit to my account. So since they're removing a debt or adding a credit are the same thing, I can say that minus a negative 10 is the same as adding a positive 10. Hopefully these real world examples have helped you understand why subtracting a number is the same as adding a number's opposite.